Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, guys, to episode four. Episode four already of our OKS save. Trying to take OKS from the amateur leagues in Denmark all the way to the Champions League. I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, series. I'm I'm super enjoying it. I'm having a ball of a time uh, playing it and recording these videos. I hope you are too. Uh, please let me know down in the comments how you're enjoying it, what you're liking, what you're not liking. I would love to hear from you. Anyway, okay, yes. Football manager shenanigans. That's what we're up to today. Let me share my screen. Let's get straight into it. So, the last time we left off was all the way back in November. Right now, it is the 2nd of February. So we have played almost one, two, three months of football since we last spoke. Well, since I last spoke to you, technically, you're not speaking to me. Last time we played Tusa and we played Grieve, we lost in the Sindbank Pokalen, which was our only big money maker, which was kind of sad. We played really terribly for like no reason at all. Anyway, since then, we've been on a good run. We've we've played like 10 games, we've drawn two, both of them nil-nil, and then we've won the rest by one goal or three goal margins. We've played pretty well. We've played pretty, pretty, pretty darn well. The month of December especially, we went not only unbeaten, but we won every single game. And in terms of the division, that takes us first right now. So we're, uh, what's that, nine points ahead of LS with one game in hand. So we have one game to play that LS don't because one of our games got rearranged. Uh, this one, the 8th of February against Otter. This one we were supposed to play in December, but it got waterlogged. But yeah, so far so good. And in terms of our promotion push, we are 14 points. Is that right? 14 points uh, like in the safe zone from being promoted. Remember, uh, the first and second place get promoted. So yeah, a lot to be excited about. A lot, a lot, a lot to be happy about. Today though, as you can probably see by the title, it is our January transfer special. January is my favorite time of all football manager because I can get so much done specifically in January that you cannot get done any other time of year. There's so many special tweaks and things you can do to scout, to find players that you could never find uh, anywhere else or anytime else. And it's completely 100% free. So uh, we can do this. We're an amateur team. If we look at our finances, we have 200 euro in the bank. <laughs> And we've done this, we've done our whole January transfer window, I'll talk you guys through it. But uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's awesome. So I'm going to talk you through the, well, like two or three ways in which I find players with no scouting budget, no, so if you can see here, our scouting budget, we've used 200 euro the whole year to scout, or we scout a one player. Um, yeah, if you look at our assignments here, no one is on an assignment we have literally, we have no, uh, what's it called? The package thingy majiggy here, no recruitment package, nothing. But we have found an awesome, awesome squad this January. We have signed, I think like, let me check. Transfer history in January. We have signed from here all the way here. So that's 14, we have signed 14 players and a lot of them could be genuinely could be star players for us in in the January transfer window so I want to talk to you how how I do that so let's let me show you right now so I have attribute masking on so if I go to a player that I know nothing about you can see we literally know nothing about anyone we have no recruitment package no scouting so we really know very little about a lot of people but there are ways around it so the first thing I do especially in January, because in January, a lot of the football games have been played, a lot of things have simulated. So we have access to a lot of stats. It's empty now, but I'm gonna show you what I mean in a second. So what these stats mean is we can look at players. So for example, this guy, Carlos Edwards, he's 43 years old, wow. We know nothing about him, zero. He plays for Trinidad and Tobago and Berry Town, apparently. He's 43, wow. But we know some stats about him. So these stats, it's not something I came up with. It's a YouTuber called RDF Tactics who came up with it. And yeah, so I have the main stats that I want to see. 
I've tweaked it to my liking and like adjusted stuff, but RDF tactics is the one I, I learned this from. So I have appearances, goals, assists, expected goals, like uh, per 90 stats, you know, how many minutes they've played. Then I, uh, in this section here, I have what I call like the midfield stats. So dribbles, clear cut chances, key passes per 90, passing accuracy, how many passes they've made per game. Here I have like the striker stats. So how many shots they take, how many are on target, how many are on target per 90 minutes. And then here we have the defensive stats. So like tackles, tackles won, aerial, headers won per 90 minutes, heading accuracy, uh, mistakes leading to goal, which is important. I want that number to be low. Uh, and uh, number of interceptions in a game, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is the stats view. So like I said, if we know nothing about any player in the world, we can learn something about here. So for example, right now, well, at the start of January, we needed we needed a left back. So what I would do if I knew nothing about anyone, I would click on left back, click OK, click on transfer, at least unsure to join us. And here we go. We have some stats already. So right off the page, this guy who plays for VRI, which is a Denmark lower division team, we can see he he has very little clear card chances, but he averages half a key pass per game. He has 91% passing accuracy. He wins 88% of his tackles, 57% of his headers, and he uh, aerial challenges per 90 minutes is at 5.2. So it's not bad. It's not bad at all. So you see what I mean? Like this is just a very, very, very quick example, but this is how I would look. And for example, Casper Kafka, I also have another view, which is my fullbacks view, which gives me all the necessary uh, attributes that are uh, attributed to fullbacks. So dribbling, marking, passing, tackling technique, uh, decision-making, composure, fitness, all that kind of stuff. So if I want someone who's like very, very good at marking, I can click marking and it gives me all the people I know something about a little bit of information. So this guy, uh, Christian Overby, if I go back to my statistics scouting, Christian Overby, we have no statistics on him, but I can look at his fullbacks stats. So I know he's very strong left-footed. He's pretty tall, he's taller than me. I'm 1.78 meters, so he's like that much taller than me. Uh, but we know he has good marking, good positioning. So maybe I would want to take a chance and give him a trial, for example. So that's the first way that I look for players, all that kind of stuff. And I have this view for goalkeepers, center backs, uh, wingers, attackers, every single position that we have. And then this is just my main scouting view, which I also use in terms of caps. So if I click on international caps, youth caps, all that kind of stuff, I can find players who have caps that want to join us. And they're most likely kind of at least above average for our squad. And we give them a trial. So that's the first two. And now I'm going to talk about the other two, which are my absolute nailed down favorites. And like I said, it costs zero dollars, zero euro to do. It is unbelievably effective, but you have to be kind of patient and you have to put in the legwork for this system to work. So on the 1st of January, so now it's the 2nd of February, but what I did on the 1st of January, what I do is... I go to here, the world icon, I click on world, I click on world again, and then I go to this general section and I go to transfers. I go to 2021, because right now we're February 2022. I click on transfers here. Show me all the released players. And then I literally go through uh, every country by country. So one country at a time. And I add every single person who has been released. So I just click and click and I list, I add them to shortlist world release players. Either why it says remove is because they're already there. So I add everyone from every single country. Maybe once you're like higher up, if you're like in the second division or third division of a country, maybe you can just look for like Germany, Spain, France, uh, Italy, you know, like the big countries around the world. But for right now, we're a sixth tier amateur team. Anyone we scout is going to probably help us in some way. So then what I do is I go to my world release players 
And because we're doing it in January, most likely there's going to be players who have already joined a club since they've been released. So I search by club and I find every single person who has who has a club. I remove them from my list who has found a club. I remove them from my list. I go through the ages. Anyone on, over the age of 30, I immediately just uh, remove. And then I go through the positions. So I like anyone who plays like a defensive midfielder. So for example, this guy. I'll go through and remove them as well. And so when I started in January, I wrote this down. Hold on. Um, I had 1,000. No. Sorry, I had 3,000 players. 3,000 players that we added to our, like, to our shortlist. 3,000. That's like a heck of a lot of players. By the time I cut and, like, filtered through everything... I cut all the ages, everyone who's joined the club, everyone who plays in a position that we don't need. That number went down to 1,550, so half. We halved our players in, in the space of like five minutes. So this whole process, by the way, to get to a short list where you can find players took me 25 minutes. I timed it, I well, I timed it in terms of songs. I was listening to Spotify, some Hillary Duff, some ACDC, some old school music, you know? But it took me roughly like six songs. Each song is like four or five minutes long. So yeah, like three, four minutes long. That's how long it took. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Michael's math for you. So for example, you can see here a bunch of players have joined random teams. So I can go here and remove. And go here and remove. Oops. Yeah, click here. Click here. List. Remove from shortlist. So from 1,500... What you then have to do is go over to here. So the transfers, you click on this, you click on anyone who wants to join you who's unsure. And then you search, by, you can search by anything you want. So the three main ways that I search at the beginning are by caps, by youth uh, youth appearances. So by youth appearances, by caps. And also if we search here, you can go under general and then world reputation. And you can scroll, you can keep scrolling until you find, you know, like until the shortlist shortens down really. So these have decent world reputation. So I add them, transfer, offer them a trial for three weeks. So the trials, at least for our division, were in the sixth tier amateur division. I would say for every hundred trials we offer, 90 say no. Uh, yeah, 90 say no, maybe 10 say yes, maybe less than 10 say yes. Of those 10... Pretty much all of them were really good for us, were amazing for us. Of those 10, maybe every two that we wanted to sign actually ended up signing with us and not being poached by uh, bigger teams. So I started with 3,000 players at, on January 1st. On February 1st, we're down, this is our total shortlist now, we're down to 246 players. So 2,800 players are gone in one month either being signed, either refusing to go on trial with us, either they're not the position, they're not the age, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it, it, we you cut through a lot and I offered them trials. And then from the trials, we offered, I think something like 85 trials or like 95 trials. No, no, like 200 trials probably. And if I show you my transfers and yeah, and then now, so 14 players came in, that's it. And I don't know how many players got poached. I, I can't even keep count, but I felt like every five players we wanted to sign, four of them ended up getting poached by bigger teams in Denmark or bigger teams around the world. But yeah, it's it's a lot of legwork, but the rewards pay off immensely. And like I said, we spent zero money, zero. It didn't cost us a single cent. And just to show you, if I wanted to, if I was lazy and I wanted to say, let's say, scout this guy who's Lithuanian, if I wanted to scout him for one week, it would cost us 600 euro. If I wanted to scout, let's say this guy who's Brazilian, some of them are unbelievably expensive if you wanna if you wanna trial them. Report. Yeah, 3.8 thousand euro. And we have 4.6 thousand euro. So all our transfer, all our scouting budget would be gone scouting one player. So it's a very low sum game. You offer trials to like 500 players, 
maybe 50 will say yes and maybe from those 50 maybe you'll sign like 10 which is basically what we did but it it pays off immensely i'll show you the players we signed right at the end uh, because if you look at our squad right now our squad is empty because i'm in the process of rebuilding my squad because we signed so many players to so many different positions so that's the second way i look at players and the third way is probably the easiest is let's see so i do this i go to the superliga so the 3f superliga i go through the top teams that i know have the best youth systems in the world and stuff if you want to know how you find that out you go to overview facilities and it tells you here so youth facilities great junior coaching good youth recruitment exceptional so michelin are going to have some good youth players so i go to the players the under 19 squad and then uh, i go to the contract view here and i click on expires and anyone whose contract expires this year so we're in 2022 i add them so look we're now technically we can sign this guy for free so I add them to a short list I created, which is just called Denmark Youth Released. So I add them to a short list. So I do that for all the big teams in um, in Denmark, which are like Michelin, Copenhagen, Brondby, Randers, Norgeland, and Silkeborg kind of in AAB. So I do that and I have them on a list here. Right now, none of them want to join us. So these are like the youth players we have. If I look at transfers, unsure. Yeah, no team, no player from another team wants to join us. But they're here. And we're in February. By the time we reach March, April, May, and they get released or, you know, like their contracts don't get renewed, we can definitely try to pick up some of them. I've done this in England. I've done this in uh, France and Iceland where I've managed in previous FMs. It, it, it's a very, very effective tool. And again, you get them for free. You don't have to pay any like... Uh, what's it called like compensation fee because they're on a youth contract or anything like that you pick them up for free and again if we're a sixth tier team they're probably going to do some good for us so and those are the three ways in which i uh, find players i scout through players i kind of like yeah do my thing and it's like i said it takes a very 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 long time so we started january 1st now we're february 2nd but we've signed 14 players who are top 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 notch players i'll just show you one where is my transfer hub transfers transfer history who is like an incredible player for example this guy nimko gribeniko we got him from a agf agf play in um in denmark he was released so he replaces gustafsson so if i just show you gustafsson and him this is just one player look at the difference look at the difference and we found him for zero euro and just trialing look at look at how much better he is than gustafsson gustafsson was our star gustafsson was like an important player star player level for us and then this guy comes in look at how good he is and we found 14 players just like this we found players from mali zambia mozambique i think um yeah i'm gonna build the squad and i'll show you all the players we found but so that's how i find players and january man january is my favorite time of year for in football manager not in not football manager my favorite time of year is probably december because of christmas anyway so yeah i'm gonna cut here i'm gonna go build rebuild my squad with all the new transfers we've had and all that kind of stuff see who to release see who not to release all that kind of stuff and then we'll be back and we'll check out the squad and for example before i go like i wanted to make changes to our strikers so rittig jacob rittig is our star striker right now but he's 34 years old and his physicals are going down the cliff so he's not going to be able to maintain the technicals and mentals that he has for very much longer we're going to need to start replacing him so he was he was our third choice striker on on paper like in the squad comparison now he's 12th to show you the kind of like ability we found uh same thing with philip meng philip meng has been our it was our left back fine how about meng does it show me philip meng uh 
Anyway, Philip Meng was our left back. He was not playing well. He was not training well. And now we found people who were like outshine him a hundred times and we're probably going to release him. Philip Meng, there he is. Yeah, so again, Philip Meng. Hey, Philip Meng, excuse me. Why is Philip Meng not showing up? That's kind of weird. Hmm. Philip Meng. There we go. So again, he was our first choice. Now he's ninth, if you look at the squad comparison. So there are players, there are, yeah, we definitely shook this squad up like a little margarita. So I'm going to build the squad. I'll be back in like two shakes of a rabbit's butt. And then we're going to look at our brand new, span, brand spanking new OKS squad for 2022, technically. Okay, guys, so we're back. I fully built my squad. We're back to, it's pretty much completely entirely overhauled. Maybe there's like, three players who have who have withstood this barrage of incoming January transfers but I am very 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 excited for this squad so in goal we brought him in before January but you guys haven't looked at him yet his name is Ian Peterson so he replaces Rasmus Lund and if we just compare the two straight up one against the other I think Peterson is slightly better especially physically and goalkeeperingly Maybe mentally Rasmus might have slightly the upper hand, but I think overall Ian Peterson is a, is an upgrade and he's like 10 years, 11 years younger than Rasmus Lund. So Peterson is now our new starter, starting uh, goalkeeper. And left back, it's uh, Bob Bjerger, I called him, who, who used to play on the wing. If you remember, well, his actual name is Mads Bob Bjerg Larsen. So he used to play on the wing, but now because we have a new winger, and he's pretty suited to play as a fullback, to be honest. Good crossing, okay marking, okay tackling, good mentals, good physicals. So he's just dropping from the wing back down to a right back. I'm in the process of scouting for a new right back because right back has now become the position we're like really, really weak in. So we're looking for one. Mads Gable, I don't know if we looked at him last time, but uh, very quickly, he comes in from a team called Brunchage. Brunchage who play in the Norbeck Liga and Fremet Amager who play in the Norbeck Liga. Norbeck Liga is the second tier. So there's the Premier League, then there's the Norbeck Liga. But yeah, he's good. I like his, his stats. He's been very, very... Like if you look at his form over the last couple of games, he's been very solid, no mistakes, not getting booked a lot. Um, yeah, no complaints to be honest. I like him. Very good physically, 1.87 meters tall. And yeah. No complaints whatsoever. So next to him is Sofus Eriksson, who we know all about. He stays with us. And now our new world scouting method brought... The first player it brought us was Ondon. Ondon, Reese Ondon, who is Cameroonian. Congo. Co Congonese? Congonian? Congonese. But look at these stats. So we, we released Mads... Uh, what's his name? Philip Meng. I released him. I'm done with him. He was... Letting us down, to be completely honest. So, this guy comes in to replace him. 11 marking, 11 passing, 14 tackling. Good positioning, good work rate. Very good determination. Okay, physicals. He will do very nicely. And next to him, uh, up front, sorry, Bergman now. Instead of an attacking midfielder, he plays as the box-to-box. -box, so we know all about him. His, his uh, yeah, he's very suited to a box-to-box. -box. He's very well-rounded overall. So, yep. He has good teamwork, he has okay passing, uh, good pace, good stamina. I like it. Central midfielder, another new player from the World Scouting, is a Colombian called Juan Felipe Sanchez. If we put him as a central midfielder on attack, he played for Aston Villa, Colombia. <laughs> I wonder if they're affiliated. No, they're not, unlucky. So where do they play? Colombia, Aston Villa. Okay, they play in the U20 division. But still, this guy is a heck of an upgrade. Five stars. Physically, he's incredible. He's only 21 years old. Mentally, he's great. Technically, is where he shines the most. First touch, passing, tackling, technique, vision, work rate, teamwork. He's 1.9 meters tall as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, lots and lots and lots to like about this guy. I'm very excited about him as a central midfielder. 
So now on the wings, we have uh, this guy. He's new. He replaces Larson on the wing. So he's right-footed. So I'm playing him as a winger on the right-hand side. He, he played for FC Edmonton in the Canadian Football League or whatever. Canadian Premier League. He played 12 times. He averaged almost a 7. I'm not going to complain about that. Especially when he's coming to play in the amateur leagues. But look. Physically, he's amazing. And there's no gap to his game. Maybe they're not like incredible statistics. But I would rather have a player with no gap than like... Someone who has like 15-15 and then like gaps everywhere, you know? So, uh, Velado Tesgay comes in as our as our right winger our left winger is Bursang he has a very long name I just nicknamed him Bursang he's either footed and again if we look at his uh, his stats he came in from Randers he played for Randers for a long time he played in the Norbert Liga for a long time and he played in the Super Liga he played uh, more than 30 games in the Super Liga way back when and he's played in the Norbert Liga very consistently which is the second tier so yeah, no complaints about this guy either footed. We can swap him around. We can even play him as a central midfielder on attack. He will do very nicely. He's 30 years old, so he's getting on, but still. I think he has a lot, a lot, a lot to offer us. Uh, he's not very composed. He doesn't have the best positioning. Everything else, amazing. And now, the two big boys. The two fancy pants of our teams. Who man. Garcia. Romari Garcia is our new left, uh, our new deep line forward on support. Look at these stats: ten finishing, ten first touch, amazing passing. No, there's no gaps. There's no gaps whatsoever. He's played in the Primera Division in Nicaragua. He's played in the Colombia A, which I think, yeah, Colombia A is the. Well, he's he's been part of a team who's been in the Colombia, A, which is the top division. Literally no gap, no gap whatsoever in this guy's game. A young striker, 20 years old, lots of loom to grow, great um, great potential, balanced personality. Whew. And then next to him, who replaces Ritting, is this guy, Anderson Gutierrez. Look at that, 14 finishing, 14 dribbling, physicals off the chain, 1.89 meters tall, 80 kilos, strong, 14 heading, 11 jumping reach. Teamwork, vision, and work rate. Ooh. He played for... Uh, he came from Levante. Levante is a pretty big team in La Liga. And then he went... He played for Barranquilla in Colombia. He didn't play and then he came with us. And then in terms of our of our substitutions, uh, Camera is new as well. Camera is uh, from Guinea. For, like uh, Keita. And is Keita from Guinea? Keita like from Liverpool. Is he from Guinea? Anyway. But yeah, he will do... As a backup, he's incredible. I don't want to dwell too much on our backups, but then we also have Fernandez. The only reason he's not starting is just because his mentals and technicals are a bit lacking. But he's going to be coming on as a rotation player very, very heavily. And he has one vision, which I'm very worried about. But he has he's 1.9 meters tall. He can jump, he can head, he can tackle, and he can mark. So as a no-nonsense, maybe we'll play him. I'll see. Uh, Dam Kayo Nierborg, we know Elvis Opoku who comes in as our backup central midfielder, who is from Ghana. He can play either as a central midfielder on attack or a box-to-box. -box. He's incredible at both. Expect to see a lot of Elvis Opoku. Next to him is a Bolivian player called Hugo Salavateria. Salavat Salavatiera. So I want to play him as a box-to-box -box or as a central midfielder. Again, he can do either one, but look, 14 passing, 12 vision, 12 work rate, 13 pace, but one strength. It's a bit worrying. Hopefully he'll get a bit buffer playing in the sixth tier. Mirza Huzik, we know very well who was our starter, and now he's relegated to the bench. Our backup winger is uh, this guy, Georgi Estravi, Eristavi, who is uh, Georgian. Yeah, Georgi is from Georgia. Again, no big gaps to his game. He's played all over Georgia. In the highest league, which is like the Premier League. He's played in Latvia in the Optibet Vers Liga, which is the Premier League of Latvia. He's played 14 times. So he's a pretty good player, I would say. I'm not crazy about him. But if we compare him to like Renhold... Oops, not him. Renhold is like the other guy I was thinking about having on the bench. Estravi's better. So... 
as Xavi gets the nod. If we find a better winger, we're going to swap them around. Faizi, we know. And then the last two, uh, Indonesian. I was born in Indonesia, by the way. So Febi Putra comes into play as an advance forward on attack if we need him to. Or as a winger, but I'm not crazy for him as a winger. He's pretty good as a winger, actually. I take that back. But yeah, so he's capped at the under-23 levels. He's played in the highest leagues in Indonesia, which is Liga 1. Liga Satu, as we say in Indonesia. So yeah, he comes in. And then next to him is Ben Utara, who is from Burkina Faso. And he's going to be our backup advance forward, with Putra being our backup defensive and deep line forward. Again, both of them, incredible finishing, first touch passing, work rate. You know, you get it. But that's our team, my dudes. This is the team we have. I won't go through all the backups that we have, all that. We released... Why well, I, I still have it, I think. Uh, let me try and find it. Yeah, look, free transfer, free transfer, free transfer. We released a heck of a lot of players. And then, yeah, if you can see here, like we're asking certain players on trial. A lot of us have rejected us. Like rejects, rejects, snubs, snubs. So, and we still have a bunch of players on trial. Um, let me show you this way. Yeah, so we have a lot of very good potential players and we have players still being scouted. We're going to see what to do with them. Two goalkeepers I'm very excited about, but we'll see. So guys, that's the transfer episode. I know it was slightly different. There was no game today's episode. I just wanted to like shake things up, you know? In terms of when we'll be back... Um, so we are currently 11 points ahead. So how about we come back at the start of March? Maybe we do that. Maybe we come back at the start of March. We see how things are going. Hopefully we'll be close to winning the league or close to at least getting promotion at the very least. So we'll see how the squad does, all that kind of stuff. I think that's a good thing. Maybe we'll come back. Yeah, maybe the end of March. I don't know. I think March. This game against B1913, who are bottom of the league. Hopefully somewhere around here we can start to wrap up the league. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So we'll see. But guys, that's today's episode. Thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in. I hope you liked it. If you have any scouting questions or whatever, please put them in the in the thingy-majiggy below and I'll try to answer them. And like and subscribe, you know all the rest. And have a good day. And we'll be back for episode 5 soon. Love you guys. Bye.